Well, hello. It's so good to see you again. Uh, I want to thank you all uh, for being a part of our services this past week. And we had an opportunity to talk about Good Friday. And I want to spend just a couple minutes unpacking that a little bit more for you in our going deeper moment. Uh, one of the most incredible phenomena uh, uh, I find in the story of the crucifixion in Mark's gospel or in other gospels uh, is what I want to talk about today. Mark is going to spend all of chapter 15 drawing attention to the deeper meaning behind the Good Friday event. He's going to crown Jesus as Lord instead of Caesar. And it's this powerful moment. But then when it's over and when Jesus is dead, what's fascinating is that the world almost returns to normal immediately. Uh, we read a couple verses later in verse 42 that the people are preparing for the Sabbath that's coming. In verses 44 and 45, Pilate says, uh, Pilate expresses almost shock and surprise that the crucifixion is over so quickly, that Jesus has died so quickly. Uh, but there's this sort of general state of, well, that was an event that happened. Let's get on with the rest of our lives. And one of the hardest pills to swallow about the great tragedy that Good Friday is, is that even in the biblical accounts, it's often quickly forgotten. That once the light breaks through the dark clouds that have gathered overhead, once the soldier sort of serves as a back alley corner and drives his sword through the body of Jesus to confirm it's dead, once the body is taken down and placed in a borrowed tomb, after all these events are over, Oddly and almost effortlessly, the world just kind of goes back to normal. People go back to doing the things that they were doing before. Uh, I'm reminded of the opening scene of the film, Hello, Dolly. And if you've seen it, you know Hello, Dolly is a musical about the story of the New York socialite, Dolly Levi. And the film begins with this frozen in time picture of New York City and you can see the trolley cars and you can see the people on the streets and the buildings and the horses and then sort of slowly from uh, the top corner of the photo down to the the, the opposite bottom corner uh, the, the the photo comes to life and things start moving again a moment that was frozen in time just kind of picks up the pieces and it just gets going once again, almost as if whatever that moment was, is lost forever. Sadly, this is one of the great fears in our churches when we remember Good Friday today, that for all of the meaning and all that is represented in the story, that we gather in our churches and we hear it one more time, we consider what it means, but it's almost too much for us to get our heads around. What are we supposed to do with the details of this story? Who wants to talk about uh, the blood and the, and the pain, uh, topics that are so uncomfortable? Many of us are shocked and confused and disgusted, and we don't know how to process all of these emotions at once, and so we don't. For many of us, we experience Good Friday and then we just move on. And I think this is one of the reasons why it's so important that every year we come back to days like Good Friday and we remember the story and the meaning that is represented so that we can be reminded of the price that was paid. We can be reminded of the brutal coronation of our Lord. And the hope is that little by little and year after year, in one person at a time, the sacrificial love that's displayed on the cross on Good Friday will take root in each one of our hearts as we learn to practice that same strong kind of week.